and I'm joined by Mr. Mark LaBelle of Dirty Honey. How are you keeping, mate? Doing all right, man. In London right now. Just got in yesterday, so enjoying a uh, few days before we really get off and uh, rolling here. Yeah, nice one, buddy. Well, like I say, last time I saw you, uh, was supporting Rival Sons in Norwich. You're opening the show in Norwich at the waterfront this time around. Uh, the tour looks like it's selling out pretty well already, man. You must be pretty happy about how things going. I know Norwich, and I think there's a couple other dates had to upgrade the venue free ticket sales. So that was really cool. Yeah, it's, um, you know, when we were here in the summertime, it was a pretty exhausting, crazy, like wild schedule. Um, so I obviously like you're happy to know that you can enjoy the fruits of your labor and coming back is going to be a, it's, it's going to be a great tour especially of the uk but everywhere is doing really well so um it's it's an inspiring it's a good sign that um you know people are enjoying what we're doing and now it's time to do it as a headliner for for the first time here so that's nice man. i mean i was at um download festival as well when you open up the oh yeah yeah on the second stage what was that like to do your first uk show at download festival dude that's gotta be insane it was, uh, yeah, well, it was funny because our tour manager was this British guy and he was like just all over us about how important like download was going to be, you know, and we were like, well, you know, obviously it's a big festival or well aware of it in the States, but like he was like, this is like a really big deal. And he was not kidding. You know, there was like, I don't even know how many people it was, but there were a lot of people there very early in the morning to check us out and, um, you know, heard, heard good things obviously, but, um, yeah, it's tough to, it's tough to play that early, you know, and I think, um, I think we managed to do okay, but, uh, it was, it was just a great day. I mean, we got to see, um, Megadeth and Maiden too. So it was a good bill and got to see, I have some friends in Shine Down. So, um, nice. it was just a fun experience all around. Well, I remember of it. Um, like I say, I was, I was out in the crowd and, me and my wife, we got down, um, met up some friends who were also coming to see you. And there was that thing where you're like, you know, it's, it's you were on first thing in the morning, it's Saturday. There's yeah. a lot of people who are already partying from the night before, a bit hungover or whatever. And you think, I hope, you know, I hope some people are going to be here. And it was quite quiet when we first got there. But maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes before you came on, suddenly you just saw people sort of coming over and coming down. And a really good crowd. Seems yeah, it was, it was great. It was way beyond all of our expectations. So, um, but I kind of knew, you know, I had a feeling knowing it, it was so nice to be on tour with Rival Sons because they were obviously a band that we looked up to, um, you know, both being California bands and I, I genuinely love that band. So, um, you know, it was honestly like a dream come true for me to get to watch them every night and play with them and get to know the guys a bit because um, I've been a fan for, for quite a while now. So, but looking you at their success, before that UK tour, or... sorry, had you played with them before the UK tour in the states or anything, or was that the no? First never, time? never played with them. Never. I only had met Miley, the drummer, once, just by happenstance in in LA somewhere, and and he didn't even remember. I mean, it was so long ago. But um, you know, he he gave me some good advice then that I I really took to heart, and um, you know, but watching their success abroad, you know for for so many years i kind of had a feeling that we were going to be well received here and uh it's it's blown away all my my expectations so far so that's cool man what, what i've come to know is like the people i knew certainly in the i knew uh come to see rival sons and not at the norwich date and i got some friends in nottingham who were now coming to see you guys at the Bodega as well um and i know the, basically the people who were at that rival Sons show whether it be the one i was at or friends who went elsewhere as soon as you put your tickets on sale we were all messaging each other and they're like dirty honey you're coming back and there's oh, a nice. cool buzz about it you know oh, and, yeah. and my friendship group i know that's all i put on my own festival in the uk so i know there's a when i was putting up a thing for, for this year when i announced my lineup for this year and it's like you know who would you like to see ideally and there was a lot of call for like oh if you could ever make it work with them being over here and you know there's a real big buzz around going around man it's, it's cool to see yeah our, um our agent had a great quote uh after the rival sun show here in london he was just like you guys are creating quite the disturbance in uh, the uk and we were like it just the way he said it just made us all laugh and uh you know but yeah i mean you know with expectations comes um a little bit of pressure obviously to to do what you're you're meant to do and i think um you know i love pressure like like that you know being having you know a, a background in athletics and stuff and um i just sort of kind of look at it like that and 
you know, get ready for, for game time, show time, whatever, you know, it's, um, it's fun to have that, like, you know, expectation on your, on your back. And well, I've never seen anyone before, mate, like, uh, particularly at Downer, like you say, you know, it's a big festival, you're on first time of the day. And then when yourself came out to the crowd during another last time and just got the crowd singing along with you and you had, you know, doing the mic trade off and all that kind of thing. I've never yeah. kind of res- like response back that early on in the morning. It was, it was really cool. <laughs> Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> people, people are uh, sober enough from uh, from the night before to to be able to not slow their words back to me. That's a good sign. <laughs> we were up. That was fun. We had a good night that night. We stayed out until like two or three in the morning at the after party, and uh, it was a long day, man. We were all exhausted, but that was a, it was a great experience. So that's cool, man. Well, I first came across you was um, was thanks to uh, one of my favorite bands, Aerosmith, who I absolutely. Yeah. And um, Tom Hamilton had shared that uh, just it was just a, a tweet just saying, you know, best cover I've heard of Last Child in a long time. And I was like, OK, well, if it's good enough for Tom Hamilton, you know, it's good enough. For yeah, me. yeah. I'll go check it out. And that rendition was fucking awesome, man. I love that. It was such oh, a- thanks, man. Yeah. Was, you know what? That's an interesting one because we got sort of commissioned to do that for this Amazon um, originals thing that they do. And uh, okay. we, you know, Anytime, I think really like anytime you do a cover, you want to put your own spin on it, but like it, it's tough to do like with, uh, you know, a rock and roll song and obviously a very classic Aerosmith song that people know and love. And so you don't want to like dive too in too much into like changing it. And so I think when we got the opportunity to do the Prince cover, it was more of, um, it was more of an opportunity to like sink your teeth into how can you creatively make it your own a little bit. Up, and i yeah and i think that was something um i'm very proud of the last child thing of course like i it, it's such a like appropriate and i think a, a good um version of it to like pay homage to a band that we all love but uh what we did with the prince cover i i think creatively i'm a little more proud with to find a way to make it your own and make it unique from yeah. the original you know is there any other songs that you would want to muck around with? Obviously, you know, the originals are absolutely banging as well. But is there yeah. any songs that if you were to cover that you'd want to play around with? I think we're going to maybe do one uh, on Saturday night. So we'll have to. Ah, cool. I'll keep my eyes open. See. Yeah, yeah. I think you'll like it. Ah, nice one, man. We'll have to keep my eyes open for that. Um, I was saying, obviously, that led me to, to your EP and then and, and then onto your album. But um, are there any plans for a follow up record yet? Or are you focusing on the tour in this yeah. year? Yeah. Well, no. We, I mean, it's obviously a major priority for us to get some new music out, and uh, we've we've got some stuff recorded already that's ready to go. I mean, it would be ready to go. the The record isn't ready to go, but we've we've done some stuff with, uh, okay. you know, um, some producers and we we're experimenting with who we want to work with and that's getting figured out, but we definitely have the time slotted as to when we're going to go and record the the new material. And, you know, so we're hoping like summertime, maybe have a new record out. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. So I'm like really excited for it. Cause I'm, I'm actually itching. The first thing we did is like one of the best things I've heard in rock and roll in a long time. So I'm like, nice. let's go, you know, I want to get this out there, you know? So I'm pretty excited. That sounds cool, man. So how does the songwriting process work for you guys? Do is it yeah, you know, any key songwriters or is it everyone bringing their bits to the soup or yeah, I think it's you know, it's any which it, it goes song by song. Like um another last time, for instance, was I just was sitting with an acoustic and kind of wrote that one for the most part on my own. Like everybody puts their you know, their own inspiration and their uh personality into their instrument and performance which makes it dirty honey obviously um but yeah like when i'm gone was a riff that john had been kicking around for a long time and we had like completely different chorus on it and that took like that literally took years to finish the way it is now and then rolling sevens for instance was something where like we were all just in the room together and it spontaneously happened nice you know within like 20 minutes so it it, it could happen any, any way. Like you just, you don't know, you take it as it comes and you appreciate it, you know, when it does. And, and obviously like having something to say, um, or a story to tell helps, um, get stuff across the finish line. So it usually starts with a riff though, I would say like, that's the first like P 
piece of inspiration that needs to happen before you can even start turning the wheels. Yeah. Some of the juice is going as such. Yeah. Like everybody's got to get their, you know, get the feels, so to speak, um, off a riff, I think, before it even turns into anything. Like, and then maybe there's like a backlog of like melodies that I've written on my phone, you know, and I've recorded that I can maybe insert into there and be like, oh, I have this thing that I think is really nice, you know, and that's sort of how it goes. And you start putting the pieces of the puzzle together. Nice one, man. I mean, for anybody, obviously, you know, this is your first UK headline tour, but for anybody who, you know, isn't aware of you guys, how did you, you know, how did the band come to be? How did you form? Yeah, we um we were all very much um, that typical LA story of, you know, showing up in LA with like an instrument and a suitcase and having a dream and it took uh quite a few years to for us to like find one another and you know get the right recipe of of bandmates involved and um you know John and I met first and we were sort of playing in clubs and you know we were going through musicians like not for any other reason than in LA it's a very dense population of musicians but like a lot of times you have people going they, they can play a club on a friday night or saturday night you know two or three weekends in a row and then maybe a month later they have to go on the road with like christina aguilera or something like they're really talented musicians and so like the dependability of people wasn't very high um and it just it just took a while to find people that wanted to be an original band and like jump off and take that risk of, of really doing that together cool so how did the rest of the guys come into the fold then after you'd been obviously working with john how did it was yeah it was just uh you know like dominoes like i i found john john introduced me to justin justin introduced me to Corey, and then just sort of went like that you know but that took probably two years for that to happen okay so it was quite a period of time before you know that were you always dirty honey or was it dirty honey once justin and Corey came into play uh yeah it, it was uh it wasn't until that like lineup was established that we became like officially dirty honey I, we were the shags at once we we always joked with the bars because they were like what's the band name going to be this week because it was changing literally that frequently you know <laughs> um because we had like a, a list of like so many bad names but um yeah, we found we found our way. Fortunately. I think everyone goes through the stages of going through different names at the beginning. It's so hard, man, these days. Like, there's so many fucking bands out there, and there's so many names that are taken, and this and that, and like, then you gotta. It's just, yeah, I don't know how anybody like comes up with something good ever. No. Yeah. I mean, I've been in bands myself, and then like that, you know, I play bass, and the amount of times you we've I've been in bands sat there, and you're going, so what are we calling ourselves? And you're like, and everyone's doing that thing of just spitting ideas, and you're like, that's rubbish, that doesn't work. Totally. <laughs> and then you find you find someone finds something, and you stick with it, and someone goes, oh, there's, I saw a band call that in three towns over, and you're like, yeah, oh, yeah. Right, okay, so I can't use them. But it's, it's it's a real struggle to find that's one of the hardest things, but it's funny that like, it's funny that it is one of the hardest things is to find a band name, but it's not that important. I've, no. I've read Joe Perry, like talking about Aerosmith, for example, he's like, the name is not important. Like Aerosmith, what is it? You know, we Metallica, what is Metallica? Like they could be named anything. It's just over time, like the music has to be that good where it becomes synonymous with the name of the band. And like, you don't even think about like the Beatles, the, the Beatles is such a shit name. If, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's not a good band i don't even like that's terrible but the music was so good that it's you know they're the most iconic band in history um yeah i don't i would never i would never walk by a marquee not knowing the music and see the a band named the beatles it just i don't know it's, you know what i mean yeah like you said the names don't mean anything like the sort of prime example i talk about there that that yeah. out of context would sound uh no, nah, it doesn't sound disrespectful. <laughs> it doesn't sound disrespectful to a man. I know, yeah. you know, like you say, the, the band, also, you just associate that name with the band. I've seen bands whose names I've looked at and gone, who, who are they? And then they've, like, you know, supported someone or whatever. And you catch them live and then you're like, wow, this, this is great. And like you say, the name becomes secondary. You just, that's right. what they're, you know, assigned to, but it becomes completely secondary. Yeah. 
So how about you for yourself, though, mate? Was it always singing? Did you ever, you know, did you start on guitar? Did you start on bass? Did you start on drums? Or did you always want to have a calling to sing? I was kind of always singing, but I, I did probably probably started on guitar and then um, kind of found my voice around like middle school ish, um, just playing in, in bands, you know, in my hometown and stuff. And then it really wasn't until I lived in Italy where I was like hosting open mic nights and you know getting paid to do it and and that was when i really like rediscovered my passion for singing and you know and performing really and and took that passion with me to um to la when i moved there and you know my, my buddy i actually moved to la to like get a job in film production oh okay working on like tv shows and movies and stuff which i did wind up doing but one of my best friends who had he was from my hometown. He had moved to California to study jazz at um, USC. He's like a fantastic musician. And he was just like, man, you know, you've got something unique that you're doing, you know, with your voice. And I don't really see a lot of people that can do that here, which was totally not something I expected to hear because LA is the home of like, you know, Guns N' Roses. And I thought there'd be a million Axl Roses, even though like that's insane to say like there's only one axel but i i would think there'd be a lot more people you know like that can sing high and do the rock thing but he was like you just like just let's like like start booking some shows at some bars and we'll we'll start slowly he was like if you have a 100 bucks you can pay a guitar player and a drummer and a, a bass player like we can get some really talented people to come in and see if you can't get something going and that's what that's what i did it took a lot longer than i expected but uh you got that yeah, I got to give him credit because he really gave me the push to start like sending emails and book, you know, shows totally with nothing, no experience. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of how I got started. Oh, fair play, man. I mean, you mentioned you mentioned Axel there was, you know, he was, what was the moment that made you go, that's what I want to do? I wanna, when you say you're finding your voice with the musical thing, you know, what was the, we all have that moment where I know I can remember, you know, the reason I picked up plus started playing bass and stuff. So I think, I just remember having this feeling like on a Friday or Saturday night in LA, there's nothing I would rather be. There's no club I can go to on my own or no like bar that's going to give me the same like experience and like high than playing at a bar or a club, you know, like I want to go play, have a couple of drinks with my friends and like, you know, get a little fucked up and like have a good time singing and playing music that I love. Like that's a, that's the best night I could possibly have in LA. And I don't care if I'm doing it, you know, at a bar that's got 50 people in it or at a theater, you know, where I'm with my own band, you know, playing to 2000 people. I don't, I don't, it doesn't really make any difference to me. I just, I liked it, you know? Um, and so I was starting to like be at home, you know, off on like a Saturday night and be like, fuck, you know, I really wish I'd had a gig tonight. Would Ray rather be doing that than like, going to this bar and waiting in line and fuck like it's just a miserable time <laughs> so oh, good play, dude. well you know it looks, sounds like you got a busy couple of months ahead with the tour so you then going over onto mainland europe as well with this after the uk dates uh what does the rest of the year hold up for, for you though man i think we're coming back here again in uh the summertime um and like i said obviously we're gonna go back and uh to the states or to australia i'm not really sure yet where we're going to make the next record um but we gotta we're gonna make the the record obviously in between you know this tour and the summer tour and then hopefully um yeah hopefully do north america again with some new material um out there that will see uh how pe if people like it of course obviously that's a big determining factor <laughs> so all right, man. Well, thanks for your time, Mark. It's been great to chat to you, dude. Looking forward hey, to seeing you too. on Saturday, man. So I'll see you down. Yeah, Saturday can't fucking wait, man. See you down the waterfront. Um, at the beginning of the interview, dude, I'm going to play Tied Up because it's one of my favorites off the off the record. But what song of yours would you like us to play at the end? Oh, God. Um, we'll go with California Dreaming just because it's fitting uh, for the name of the tour. All right, buddy. Well, thanks for your time, Mark. And uh, I'll yeah, see you Saturday, man. Yeah, man. I can't wait. See you, buddy. Later.